If you've seen the first episode of Camera 101, you know I talked a lot about wobbly camera shots as being the giveaway for amateurish camera work. Well, there's an even bigger giveaway than that. Bad sound. So let's see what Darius has to say about it. We're gonna dress nice tomorrow. I'm gonna miss your most dedicated- Huh? The western side. Okay, well, I guess that's what I know. I, I can't, I can't hear what they're saying. Why am I not hearing any footsteps? If you have bad sound in your film, that is the first thing your audience will notice. Having bad sound is like a huge red flag that screams out. I'm an amateur. This guy. Yeah, audiences really don't tolerate bad sound. For instance, if you were to go out and shoot a movie and you shot it completely horribly, but you had great sound quality, audiences will tolerate that because then they'll just assume that the movie was, it was just supposed to look like shit. But if you went out and you made your film and you killed it, great image quality, great lighting, pristine compositions, but your sound quality was horrible, they will not tolerate it. They'll just assume that you're an amateur who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I know it sucks. I didn't make the rules of the game. I'm just letting you know what game you're playing. Darius is talking about working with actors there really and as vloggers really we're sort of doing things on the fly so it's even more difficult and you've got to be more creative sometimes with what you do but it's worth having a look at his channel there's lots of good advice on there it's called D for Darius I'll put a link in the description. So in this film we're going to be looking at lots of different microphones how they work how you use them where you position them and a lot of that has got to do with the environment that you're in that's really important when it comes down to trying to get good sound understanding how sound works within the environment that you're in so most of the configurations you'll have maybe for your main camera might be something like this a dslr or mirrorless type camera that's got a code shoe and a, and a top mounted top mic on a three and a half mil mini jack and that works really well in most circumstances but why do we why do we do that i mean most of these cameras that come well all of them that come that can record video are going to be able to record sound as well and you know this has got little microphones in the top there now at the moment i'm taking sound off this little lavier mic from my main camera and it's nice and close to the mouth because that's very important we're going to go through it, that in in just a second but if i switch to the sound from this i'm just going to put that into record and i'm going to give myself a little clap just because that makes it easier then to sync up the two sounds in post. I mean, most modern uh, edit platforms now will have a way of doing that automatically. I use Premiere Pro, and with that, all you do is select the tracks that you want, right click, press synchronize, and it will automatically bring them in. But it's as well to have the clap anyway, just in case something goes wrong with that. You can match up the point when your hands are both together if both lenses are looking at it. So if I pick this up now, we will see some of the problems you probably already heard. If I've switched to the mic, that's that's on this uh, this camera that any handling noise that you make on this that is going to come through you know into your sound so it, that's you know it's one of the problems but the biggest problem is this any wind if you're outside across the top of the mics it's going to give you that horrible wind noise now you can alle alleviate that a little bit with little stick on things that you can get little fluffies that you can get that you can stick on to the top there but doesn't do a very good job much better to have uh, an external microphone and a more directional microphone which we'll talk about uh, a bit in a minute as well but the main thing the first thing that i really want to talk about is how sound changes with distance because it changes on something called the inverse square law don't run away it's quite simple and i'm going to show you a little graphic here with light which also obeys the inverse square law to, to show how that works. So take a lamp and position it so that it illuminates one quarter of the screen. Then move the light twice the distance away and you'll see that the light is now illuminating the whole screen. So the same light is spread over four times the area. So anything that propagates out into 3D space spreads itself out thinly quite quickly. And of course the opposite is true as you go closer, which is why top lights don't really work for illumination. Great for light in the eyes and a bit of fill, but as a key light they'll burn out the subject as you get close, much quicker than you think. Hopefully you can picture this with light, sound behaves exactly the same. So really all that's saying is that the closer you get a mic to the source of the sound, the louder that sound's going to be and it's going to be much louder than you actually think it is compared to the other sound around because of the response curve of, of the microphone. The fact that it is by moving a, a microphone maybe from here to here, having it half the distance from my mouth, I'm going to massively change the level that I'm getting. I'm going to get six dBs more basically from, from halving the distance of, of bringing that, that uh, microphone up, which is a massive difference. And what that means is that if there are background noise, if you're outside or somewhere where there's a you know inside with air conditioning buzz or something, then 
when you bring that up, either automatically or manually, the sound is going to be brought down so your sound is still the right level, but the background level is going to be much, much lower in respect to that. But actually, the biggest thing that, that will sort of happen with, with things like that is not background noise so much, but reflected noise from your own sound if you're inside. If you're inside and you're talking, as we said before, that live bathroomy type sound, which you'll get off hard surfaces, will make the sound sort of very tinny and distant and, and horrible if the mic is too far away, if you're inside. Outside doesn't matter so much. So it might be that if I were outside and I had my one mic, maybe it was a radio mic, I'm using the radio mic here and I've only got one and I'm clipping that on me. If I was clipping it on me and I only want my sound, then I would get it as high as possible always so that I can get the maximum uh, level of my sound compared to any other sound and reflected sound if I was inside. But if I were outside and I maybe was with another person, there would be a massive difference between my sound and theirs. So I might actually clip that lower down to, to me so that when I've got my sound and somebody else's sound, it's sort of going to be you know, much more closer to the, to the same level. Obviously, it's better to use you know, two, two mics, you know, a mic for each person if you've got that, but that's not always possible. So we're sort of making those decisions of how, of how you're going to do that. And remember, if you're outside, much easier than if you're inside, because if you're outside, your own sound, if there's no background noise to worry about, if you're somewhere nice and quiet, then your sound is just going off into the ether. It's not bouncing back and giving you that reflected sound, which makes it, makes it sound like you're you know, sitting in the middle of a box somewhere in the middle of a bathroom. So you haven't got that and you don't have to worry so much. So having, having it low down would be absolutely fine to get the sound from two people if I was outside. If I was inside and the sound was a little bit live, then I wouldn't want to do it that way and I might try and find a different way to do it. So one of the things that, that complicates this slightly, we're going to get into a little bit more technical stuff, is how the, the, the mic responds to, to sound. Now, a microphone like this, or a Lavier mic, has a completely equal response all the way around to sound. Doesn't matter which way the mic is facing and wherever the sound is coming from, you half the distance, you'll get 6 dB more of sound. Doesn't make any difference. But that's not true of all mics. These sorts of mics, the gun type mics, the top mics that you have on your camera, and to the extreme, the hyper, hyper cardioid type mics, this sort of mic, basically, the longer the mic, the more directional it is. So what does that mean? How does that sort of affect the sound? Well, I've got a little diagram to show that as well. So picture this as your camera with a top mic. It's not a particularly long one, but it will have a directional bias towards the front. You can mark a point around the microphone where the response will be the same. Manufacturers print this as the polar diagram. And in a gun mic, it's heart-shaped, which is why they're often called a cardioid microphone. So the line represents a distance around the microphone where any given sound will produce the same level. So a dog barking in front of the camera would produce the same level of sound as one barking to the side but much closer. The voiceover for that, by the way, was done with a lip mic, which does the best job at disregarding extraneous noises and isn't affected by the acoustics of the place you're in. So with that in mind then, you can use the response of whatever microphone you've got to your advantage to know what you're actually going to, to get with that, something that might be sort of quite directional like that. And, and my main camera does have quite a long microphone on it. You can get them ones that are, are much shorter, which I might use in, in different circumstances. So in a circumstance maybe with this, if I'm almost always filming someone, might be someone talking, I'm pointing the camera at them and, and that's absolutely fine. I'm getting their sound and I'm disregarding some maybe background sound that might be happening around here, you know, much more than if I had a, a shorter microphone on. But if I wanted to pan away to show something that they're talking about, then their sound would drop a lot. So you've got to know that that's going to happen if you're using this sort of microphone. So you might be better off if it was quiet enough around you to, to use a microphone like that or put a personal mic on, which would be you know much better as well. But sometimes you know you might be wanting to, to have yourself talking as well in the sort of vlogging that we do. Sometimes you want to talk, well, I'm very close behind the camera. So actually this mic, I can talk as well and get you know reasonable level with it. And you know, you've got to sort of think about uh, how that works. And with things like your, your Instas and your, your GoPros, Similar thing there. I mean, they've got multiple uh, microphones in them usually so that they can pick up sound from, from different areas. They also usually have a function in there, which is wind noise, which you can, you can turn on. And what that does is if you've got wind just over one of the mics, because normally it's blowing from one direction and uh, you know, you'll get one mic that's affected more than another and it will shut down that mic. And they do a reasonable job at doing that. But just generally for sound, 
it will record sound around it. But normally they're configured to get more from the front than the back. So if you're filming yourself vlogging along like this, you know, you, you might get good sound just straight out the camera if there's not too much wind noise, and that would be absolutely fine. But then you turn the camera around, it will drop because it's configured to have less sound. So you've just got to know that that's going to happen. And when you turn it around, bring it closer to you and it will get your sound just the same. So you can talk as you're walking along, move it to show something and bring, bring it closer to you and you'll still get good level, good sound as you're doing. The wind noise is the thing with that, but you can get around that. I use this quite a lot. This is a, just these wind jammer, windshield type things that you put over the top. It's foam um, and I actually do double on that. So I've got this, this one's got three microphones on it, so all of those have got this little fluffy. So it's a little stick-on fluffy that you can uh, you put in there. So that's on there as well. So there's one there, there's one on top in here, which is falling off. I'm going to have to stick a, a new one on there. They don't last forever, so you know you have to go through. But that actually does a surprisingly good job outside, and you know we get a lot of wind sometimes on the boat. So yeah, something like this works really well. Tonight, yeah, and it's, and it's yeah. going to be nice. Looking forward to getting to Cheshire. Cheshire, yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, you know, Greece here I and the Greece here I leave, and Turkey here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, lots of winter jobs to do. We are going to try and get quite a bit of sailing in over the winter. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little bit warmer than uh, than it was in Venice, so you know we'll we'll use the boat when we can and get out and explore when we can. The GoPro was getting a little bit of protection from the doghouse of the boat there, but when you're out on deck in this, you need something more. The wind we were expecting has arrived. It's uh, gusting 40 knots in the anchorage this morning. We were in a good spot. We knew it was coming, so we've. Uh, we found a nice sheltered spot, uh, but I have put the bridle on. I know we talked about uh, anchoring quite a lot in the in the last episode, so I'll make it brief. But uh, this is what we have here. These are brilliant. These uh, road. There are several of these uh, type of radio mics that are out now. They're, they're they're brilliant. I mean, they're actually better sound than the the professional ones that I used to use. I I think. And and you know, these have got more drop out than than these ones. These ones you can basically, if you're in line of sight, you can be a very long way away and it still pick up with hardly any drop out. And if there is a drop out. They've got the added advantage that they record internally as well. So whenever you've got these two going and you've got the receiver on the camera going, then it records sound from, from both of them. And it records them separately on a different track as well. Because the other thing to think about is that all these microphones you're using are mono microphones. What you're doing when you edit, you've got two tracks, but it's putting the same thing on both tracks. You get a sort of pseudo um, stereo type system out of uh, some of the multi microphoned cameras, um, but it's it's not proper stereo. You know, you've never got that. It's, that's not what we're recording. We're recording mono, and this takes advantage of that by having one on one track and one on the other. So it's not stereo. It's just two mono dual mono tracks that you're you're recording. But it, you've separated then two sound sources, and that's really really useful because you can have you know one on one person, one on another. If one person coughs, you can you can just in the edit have their microphone phone down or if you you know they're out of shot that you don't want any of their sound their extraneous sound from their microphone you can take it down you've got two separate tracks but you do have to remember when you put that onto your edit platform that you've made sure that it knows they're mono tracks and they're, they're separated it, it would tend to join them together if you try and do that so uh, yeah this is what the receiver looks like it shows two tracks and you can uh, you have to go through it by pushing two buttons together on the road to, to switch it from mixing them both together all in one go or separating them but if you haven't separated it you know it's very useful do experiment as well with these Lavier type mics or the uh, the radio version of different places to put it in wind noise because I mean at the moment I've got one just up here it's got no sort of wind gag on it because I'm inside don't need it um, but if I went outside that I could put one of these on they come in different colors I could have one that matches but it's still going to look like a hamster sort of stuck on the top of your shirt there I don't usually do that I usually bury them down a little bit because surprisingly they don't get muffled um, very easily you have to really bury them to, to get it muffled and quite often uh, it's certainly if you've got a coat on or maybe even a scarf it might be just tucked under that under a tie it would go 
un, you know, behind it, not, not actually in front of it. These things are quite soft, so they don't tend to, to rustle, but do have a listen if you, if you can, if you've got the uh, ability to put headphones on or play something back to, to find out if it's there, but you'll get used to what works and what doesn't. Normally with these on, they, they work absolutely fine inside some clothing and much better to, uh, to keep out of, of that sort of sound. Uh, and it, you know, it works really well for me and I, I prefer that. And quite often if I'm using this setup that I showed you, I'll have the, the foam uh, version there. I don't really use the media mod. I didn't go for that. I've gone for, for this, which is the, the other way of getting a three and a half mil mini jack input. So I could put the receiver, uh, clip it onto here for that if I wanted that sound. And if I didn't, I can pull it out and I've then immediately just got the microphones here, which means Means if I'm waving the camera around, I've you know that's actually better for sound than than having maybe the directional source. The media mod is quite directional; and it's forward. So if you what you wanted to do was lots of, of moving the camera around from one thing to another, it might not be what you want. So I think this gives a little bit more flexibility. Actually, in the next um, video, because I use mainly Insta 360s now, these have got some really quite good little clip-in uh, units that you can put even on this one here, one that clips on and you can put the, ra the radio uh, uh, receiver on uh, and it'll get a 360 shot and still get you good sound. So I'll put that in the next video. So I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please do subscribe. It costs you nothing and really helps us out. And we're trying to get this sort of Camera 101 series going. So it'll be, uh, be quite good for that if you can do that. And uh, leave your comments if you've got any other suggestions of how to get good sound. Thanks for watching.